uh, we actually found a bug in the cellular invoice review report, which apportions the usage costs. So uh, we found the issue in that and fixed it. Um, in, and it's a very conditional scenario. Um, what we were doing was taking um, an AT&T wireless account where AT&T puts all of the cost of the pool onto a primary member. And the way we were modeling that in TAMS was to create a primary plan with that total cost and then of course make it eligible for discounts uh, so that they would get their you know 18 or 22 percent discount um, off of that pool cost. And we would um, put the allowance however on the sub account and the reason that we were putting the uh, allowance on the sub account instead of on the plan is so that if that primary member gets removed for a operational reason and gets canceled because somebody leaves the company and a different member becomes the primary, we could do a zero duration removal and yet the uh, sub account would still have its baseline allowance intact in terms of gigabytes of allowance. Uh, it didn't um, you know, uh, disrupt our billing baseline for the allowances if we did a, if we had had the allowance on the primary plan and did a zero duration removal of that primary plan, then there would be no allowance remaining in the, in the billable baseline. And, and that was a problematic because then it would look like all usage would have been billed at overage rates. So we realized that the flexibility of TAMS would allow us to put the cost on the primary member so that it would match the billing. And then we can put the allowance on the sub account, which would avoid any future non, you know, non-billable removals. Um, but in that scenario, um, and there had to be some rollover allowance before this little bug presented itself, and that rollover had to be on the primary member. Then it, it ended up not redistributing the cost properly. So it was a very conditional scenario, and we got it, um, we got it taken care of. Um, so, what I'm going to do though is just demonstrate what this looks like uh, as a uh, simple um, uh, demonstration for the benefit of this uh, recording to show how the uh, two versions of the cellular invoice review of the report, one non-apportioned and one apportioned, uh, how they work and how simple it is to, to, to get to them and some of the real benefits that could be useful to the clients. So this sample client has a couple of AT&T accounts, a deleted services, and one, two, three, four, five, six active Verizon wireless accounts. I'm gonna, I've already kind of prepared the other six accounts, but I'm going to um, kind of undo uh, this seventh account and, um, I'm gonna come in here and take out any billing adjustments. So normally when we reconcile an account, we will import the usage. This one happened to have a lot of billing adjustments on it, devices that were canceled or moved to other accounts. It doesn't really matter though. You'll see that we had it to within $3. Uh, TAMS was 12.36, the supplier was 12.39. So there's a couple of yellows and some greens. Um, and so, you know, there may be some discrepancies in taxes between the build total and the TAMS calculated total. And it may be a little higher, a little bit low, but overall, you know, we've got a good grip on all of the usage and this particular uh, Verizon account um, has a, um, a, uh, a 10 gig pool. Um, and the pool cost is on, um, here's the 10 gig uh, uh, allowance. Uh, let's see, the sub account uh, in this particular scenario um, has the fee for the 10 gig, actually I think, uh, yeah, right here, um, was $120.90 uh, and it's billed at the top of the bill. So in order to, as a, prerequisite to generating this report, what we would do is after we calculate our costs, 
we just right click and say apply billing adjustments to reconcile. And it goes through line by line and puts in individual reconciliation adjustments to take out those pennies, either high or low, for each individual line. And then if there happens to be, normally there isn't in this particular case, there's a special scenario, but it's not important. There's also an account level adjustment. But um, in general, it will make sure that everything matches exactly line by line and uh, on, the, on the total of the bill. So if that is done for every account for a client, and you go and you generate a accounting report, and I'm gonna generate two reports. One is what's called a historical spend profile. And this report, if you read in help, it's actually just gonna go through and gather up all of the costs of every account using these numbers that are in this table, which are the su supplier total costs. So this is what the supplier bills. So if I run this report, I'm going to get um, a historical spend profile for this particular client, and I'll I'll back it up just a couple of months so that we get more than one. You know, it's a graph, but we're only focused on this May um, billing cycle. I just wanted you to see how that looks, and there's the grand totals, and it shows devices and average cost per device, and of course it's a real uh, mix of devices, tablets, uh, smartphones, basic phones, whatever. Um, but then it, further down, it shows account by account uh, what are the totals and devices within each account. Okay, now that is all from the supplier. So we have 75, 10, 28 in May. Now I'm gonna move this off to the side for now, and I'm gonna generate the cellular invoice review, non-apportioned. So I'm just gonna do it for one month, for the month of May, I could do more months, but this is really intended to help with accounts receivable. And what it generates is this report that shows for the month of May, breaks it out by supplier, shows the total of the accounts, and now these are actually computed values from TAMS, not um, just the totals off of the, the typed in values that are on this grid. These are actually computed totals. Now, if you've done the reconciliation, they are gonna match to the penny exactly, so that the supplier cost and the computed cost, because the computation includes billing adjustments, so they, they, they make now match exactly. Same with Verizon, like we have a client that has like about 45 or 50 Verizon accounts. Well, they, it helps them to be able to see what's the grand total that I need to send one check to Verizon and one check to AT&T to pay all of my bills. Similarly, each of the devices, I'll come over to the right here in just a second, we break it down to individual line detail. And of course, these total costs are gonna match if they're reconciled exactly, because we had them reconciled you know, exactly to the penny. And you can export this to Excel, you can turn on filtering, you can group and sort by filter or by you know cost center and you can see the subtotals, you could do it by device type, you could do it by account number, whatever you, that people want to see. Of course, it highlights high usage and high costs. There's some thresholds and that's again documented in help. Um, and so these are easily exported to Excel and then they can be sent over to a client for their own uh, interrogation if they want to turn on the filtering. It's a very easy auto filter if you're familiar with that capability in Excel. Now, what's really great about this is I also have uh, cost centers, and notice that you can have some of the same cost centers with AT&T as you do with Verizon, and that those cost centers might span different accounts. So this table over here is for them to put into their general ledger. When they write a checkout for 12 16 42, they know exactly what the distribution is for each of the cost centers. Now, sometimes like there's an account level charge that's not tied to a single phone nor a single cost center. So those are where the asterisks come from, such as overage uh, in a pool that has a whole bunch of cost centers in it, right? Um, or some late fee, you know, that's not charged to an individual cost center. So there can be, and of course, those costs are easily understood when you come in and look at the details down below. What are those things? Okay. Now, when we, uh, but I want, want uh, to point out that there are some folks that are primary users that might have very high um, uh, expenses, 
uh, because they happen to be the primary member of a pool, like in AT&T's case, um, whereas they may have very little usage. So um, we're going to um, see what happens when we rerun the report and do an apportioned uh, of the same data. Um, and so I'm going to take the same client, the same request information, and the top of the bill is actually identical because the accounts don't change. They still have the same cost per account. So this left-hand side is the same. The totals are the same. The right-hand side with the cost centers total out the same, but the cost allocations are different. So you'll notice like the 2015 100 is 1938 versus 1952. And that's because the apportioned uh, account now takes the cost of the pools and any overage in those pools and distributes them in proportion to the usage of each member in the pool. So the high message, high users in a pool will end up with more of the cost. And uh, the low, so this phone here that had um, 3,900, uh, um, I'm sorry, yeah, 3,900 megabytes of, of usage in a pool, their total cost as billed by the supplier is 159. But when you take it in proportion to their usage, they become 202. That's about a 25% bump in their cost. And somebody else that had very little usage, their costs are gonna go down because they uh, didn't um, have any of the, of the pool costs. So um, this uh, uh, apportionment is, you know, taking the pool cost, both the monthly recurring and any overage and, and redistributing it according to the users in that pool. Standalone users stay standalone and, uh, um, you know, the, it doesn't uh, cross accounts. It stays within, you know, the apportioning within each account. So uh, again, this table can be exported. And again, the AP, now this is a much more equitable, and you can click on this and export it as Excel and send it right over to them. So it's a very um, uh, uh, useful and equitable way of distributing these costs and of course, um, you know, the, the highlight, highlights also help them from a business intelligence perspective to see who has uh, high usage. I think the data, if it's over 10 gig, it highlights it. Uh, again, the help files talk about, you know, um, message thresholds. I think if it's over a thousand messages and over a thousand peak minutes, um, then it kind of highlights them. It also highlights high cost users. Um, and that could also be because like, you notice there's equipment in here. And this particular month, there was $403 worth of equipment charges. So um, you've got your net monthly recurring costs, you got your usage costs, you got your equipment, other costs, and it says what is included in there is like one-time charges, fees, taxes, universal service. Everything's in native currency. So even if this it has TELUS and Canadian dollars and and other you know uh, bill uh, accounts in U.S. dollars, everything's in native uh, dollars, in native currency. So, because uh, that's how they're going to be paid. When you pay TELUS, you probably pay them in Canadian dollars uh, or you do a conversion to, to US dollars, but uh, that's how their bills are. So, anyway, um, I think that's it. I'm going to stop the recording. Or, is there any questions about that? No, not for me. Okay. So, it's real simple. Um, right click, reconcile every uh, account once it's done being audited. Um, and then uh, generate the reports uh, and you export them to Excel and off, off and running. So um, that, that's it. So I don't have anything else. I actually am gonna be uh, running to another meeting here at, at noon our time, which is in seven minutes. I have to drive over there. So I, um, if there's nothing 